Hello folks, Judson here from Kootenai Backcountry Guides and I'm here on a rainy day in October and I'm uh, going to give you a snippet of a uh, lesson plan out of our uh, traditional Navigation 101 course on the Universal Transverse Mercator System, otherwise known as UTM, and this is going to be about how to uh, express your position on a map or how to find a position on a map using the uh, UTM system. So in this lesson you will learn uh, what is the UTM system, some of the advantages and disadvantages of the UTM, um, the bigger picture UTM and some detailed UTM breakdowns and how to use the UTM to uh, communicate your position and find yourself. Um, what would be really handy for you to have would be a copy of the uh, Backcountry Skiing Canada map of Whitewater. Um, a ruler might also come in handy but isn't uh, necessary uh, but that map would be great. Um, if not, you don't. If you don't have that map, you can pick that map up at Rome. You can go to Backcountry Skiing Canada's website, order it off of them. We also have copies at Kootenai Backcountry Guides, so you can get it off of us as well. Um, if you don't have a map, that's also fine. Uh, you will be able to uh, learn from this lesson, regardless of whether or not you have a map. So this is a snippet of our uh, traditional navigation 101 course for backcountry uh, skiing and hiking. Now. This could be, you could use it for anything really, uh, but we do kind of focus on the uh, backcountry skiing and hiking components. This uh, course is going to be half in class uh, on October 23rd, 2021, and then half in the field. And we're going to go up around uh, Whitewater to do our field components in the PM. Um, what you'll learn on this course will be map reading. We're going to go from advanced to basic. You're going to learn how to read UTM grid and lat long positions and when to use those. Uh, learn how to communicate your position on a map to outside resources in the event of an emergency. You will learn how to find yourself on a map using triangulation in the field. And you're going to learn how to plan a route using a map and compass from your home. And then we're going to learn how to use that map and compass to follow the route in the field. And we're going to cover some additional tools you can use to support uh, your navigation, phone, GPS, altimeter, watches, and uh, where to find good quality maps both online and offline. Um, so what is UTM? This is the Universal Transverse Mercator System. It's a system of uh, position format on a map and it divides the earth into a flat grid using meters and kilometers. And for backcountry skiing and hiking purposes, our maps generally break down into one kilometer square grid, which is what uh, makes it so handy for us. We're measuring ourselves in kilometers for the most part in the field. And uh, when it breaks it down into kilometer square grid, that can be really handy. So looking at the map itself, Let's have a look at where we can find these different things on the map. So with our scale and grid, so with our whitewater uh, map from the Backcountry Skiing Canada, what I'm looking at right here is I'm looking at the bottom right corner of the map. So on the bottom of the map, you're going to find a lot of stuff on it. You're going to find the easting, which is right here. And we're going to get into uh, what that means in a little bit. But here is your easting, and then along here is your northing with the UTM uh, position as well. And these easting lines are going to run basically north-south on the map, and the northing lines are going to run east-west across the map. And then what it does here is this is breaking down your easting position, which we're going to dive into a little bit and how to uh, figure that out. And over on this side over here is your northing position. Now what also can uh, get confusing on these maps is all of a sudden you have your longitudinal lines, which are here, these arrows indicate the longitudinal lines so this black box right here that's the longitudinal line and that works with your lat longs and there's a different way to express your position using that so as you can see they don't line up like here is our basically our easting line 
going across and then the longitudinal lines go across and they go from black and then this white and these are not in kilometer squares whereas these lines are one kilometer apart in between them so in between these blue lines on the map is one kilometer and your longitudinal lines are not measured by kilometers they're measured in degrees minutes and seconds so we're gonna cover that in class on how to express yourself there this is just about the UTM and then underneath you can get your scale which breaks things down here's your scale and then it goes over the thousand meter grid and gives you the map datum really handy stuff to have on a map so next is the bottom left hand corner of our map um, really cool on here we have the photos with this map they can come in really handy when you're in the field you're planning a trip uh, they've done a really good job on this map of including all of these photos so on the map on the back you're gonna have a picture of hummingbird pass and then these little signs right here these photos are placed on the map throughout the map so when you look on the map you'll see a corresponding photo um, that little photo thing will show you exactly kind of where that photo is and what area it's taken on the map so on this left hand side we have the latitudinal lines which we can see here with this black line right here this is our latitudinal line and then here is our longitudinal line here so these for this lesson we're going to ignore this and we're going to focus in again on the UTM coordinates which is this number right here and we can see again these lines going across and they they line up so we have what would be our um, our easting over here which is four eight six zero 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 it goes right up here and then moving across here we have our northing and the northing is that five four seven three zero 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 and that is it's actually five million four hundred and seventy three thousand meters which can is actually north of the equator um, and we'll get more into that in a little bit here as well on this map we can get into our declination right down here this is the declination diagram we're going to cover this more in class in details and uh, here we have how to calculate out your declination as well and uh, a few other numbers here with the approximate mean declination and magnetic declination we're not going to get too deep into that at this moment at all we're just going to get straight into the uh, UTM system so there are some advantage and disadvantages of using this UTM some of the advantages are it treats the world like it's flat so that can be really handy um, when you're running calculations and breaking it down into grids um, it uses meters and me measurements so it uses meters for its measurement which is can be really handy because you want to work in kilometers basically when you're trip planning and into hundreds of meters and you can divide out and measure quite easily using this system and knowing exactly how long your routes are um, it's broken down into square grids of a kilometer each which is absolutely great we love that um, positions can be expressed to the nearest meter if needed if you wanted to get exact and really nerd out you can get all the way down to the nearest meter using this system be quite tricky but you can use GPS and uh, other devices to figure out exactly where you are to the nearest meter um, and the ski touring maps generally all have those meter grids overlaid on them which is really handy because then anywhere on the map you can sort of use that to figure out exactly where you are within that meter grid um, it's easy to measure distance for trip planning or route estimation as you're going if you have a leg or an overall route you can easily use these squares to measure out and figure out exactly how far it is you have to go um, it's better for trip planning and communicating positions easily I find that uh, it, it better than the lat longs especially for trip planning and 
Some disadvantages uh, to this are it treats the worlds like it's flat, so that can get uh, complicated in some ways. And uh, maybe evidence that the Earth is actually flat. So maybe some flat earthers out there are using this to prove that the Earth is flat. And that can get quite tricky when you're arguing with someone who thinks things like that. But anyway, uh, this creates a, there's a gap between grid north and magnetic north. So these grids run basically straight. The Earth isn't straight. So when you have a compass, you need to calculate out and figure out what the difference is that's going on there and we're going to get into that in the declination section of the course to show you how to run declination off of your compass and uh, we use declination to account for this uh, difference uh, it's not universally ad as adopted as lat long so often um, if you're talking to helicopters airplanes they know how to use utm but often even in forestry they're they're talking about positions on maps in terms of uh lat long and um, I find that, that people often use that in a setting if they're not trip planning and uh, things like Google Earth are calibrated towards uh, having the uh, lat longs versus UTMs and you can go and change the settings and move into UTM for position expression and whatnot um, and we're going to cover that as well in the course and I'm coming up right now with a digital navigation course which will show you the ins and outs of how to use the uh, digital tools available to us to uh, trip plan and work in conjunction with your traditional navigation skills. Um, maybe someone out there can think of some more advantages and disadvantages to the system. This is just what I came up with. I am not a cartographer. I am a backcountry skier. I simply use this stuff uh, for backcountry skiing and you can get really, really quite uh, deep into things uh, and uh, we're not going to go that deep because otherwise you could go to university for this type of stuff. And I certainly haven't done that. Um, this is just me and how I use this stuff to plan my trips and uh, how you can plan it as well, for how you can use these tools to plan your trips and uh, ultimately find uh, better locations, have better trip plans and be safer out there in the backcountry. So here's our uh, big picture with uh, UTM and UTM zones. It's just going to lay out exactly how the Earth is uh, laid out in this position format. And basically what we have here is we have our latitudinal lines, which run up and down. So they're running up and down. They tell us how far north or south we are on either side. And uh, with that, we have the equator, which uh, we'll get into in a bit, but that kind of serves as the middle. But this system uh, actually starts all the way down at the C and moves up. So these squares represent the zone that you're in. So these are the zones with um, this axis being the, uh, the letters. And if you'll notice, there's no I and no O, so they've got rid of those. And kind of confusing as well is we have A and B zone being spread out really wide all across the bottom. And this is just done because it's really hard to make the Earth flat um, because it's not. And so they have to take some uh, liberties and sort of figure it all out. And so this might get really confusing if you're in the South Pole. Luckily for us here in the Kootenays, we're not in the South Pole. And uh, we are up in here. So being up in here, we have regular uh, squares. The other place it can get a little bit confusing is up in northern Norway, where we have 31, 33, and 35x. And I just don't know enough with how to figure this out. So seeing as people aren't there, we're not going to get deep into working with these anomalies that are going on in this uh, system here. So I and O are not represented on this uh, north-south axis. And then the east-west axis, we go with numbers. So we're going across with numbers. So when we try to find the Kootenays up here, we always go and we're going to start with um, the uh, the number going across. So it is 11. If we follow it, we have 11 W 
would be up here and then we're going to go all the way down to 11u and that is right where we are in the Kootenays we're in that grid there so in the law so the longitudinal lines the 0 to 60 moving across the bottom here they are every six degrees so they've broken it down into six degrees of uh, longitude across and then um, so one is at the far west in 60 so one being over here at the far west and then 60 being over here at the far east and they this is a cylinder so it wraps around so the 60 and 1 are the same spot pretty much and the middle is going to be 30 so that's where your prime meridian is is 30 going halfway across prime meridian being right there and then um, so Nelson we've already covered that is in zone uh, is in zone U and then one other thing to note is with the latitude running A to Z every eight degrees they have another box going on there and that is drawn that arrow there is drawn where Nelson is so New York City then would be in zone 18 T so that's where this yellow line is we have New York City right there and we'd follow it across to 18 and so there's the 18 and then we go into T. So there's New York City at 18 T. So question, what zone is Southern Mexico in where that arrow is? And I'll give everybody just a second to look across and sort of maybe run their fingers on their screen and figure out where that is. All right. And Mexico here before we switch over is in 14 Q so that's southern Mexico 14 Q so how the UTM grid squares are divided so zone 17 R is divided into 100,000 meter squares so there's 100,000 meter squares in each zone they're absolutely huge. You can see five going across, so they're 500,000 meters wide. Each 100,000 meter square is divided into 110,000 meter squares, right there. And then each 10,000 meter square is divided into 100, 1,000 meter squares. And this is where we find our map. So our map is divided into these thousand meter squares. Now that doesn't mean that your map that you have is going to be a full exact 10,000 meter square. That's not the case. It's going to um, be broken down into the area around Whitewater and anywhere you buy a map, whether it's at Rogers Pass or the coast, it might straddle several or be on the corner of different 10,000 meter squares. So essentially it's just divided into these thousand meter squares for every kilometer on the map and the grids go all the way across which makes it really handy for you to do your measurements makes it a great system for planning backcountry ski trips next up uh, in the course when we're in class we're going to cover and have this really great um, video from this guy at Florida Adventuring called the UTM grid where he really breaks it down and describes it we're not going to play that here if you really want to strongly recommend just going into YouTube watching this clip you can start it from the beginning if you want it's a half hour it really breaks deep into UTM and it's going to do a lot better job than I can here uh, and it's great really love it really in depth uh, this guy does a fabulous job watch this video we'll play a section of it on the course so that people can get sort of the heart of what it is that uh, matters there um, for us and so now we're going to get into how to communicate our uh, UTM and each so each square has a thousand meters in it so here we have our uh, 7 5 and 7 4 right here there's 7 4 and 7 5 and in between those two numbers is a thousand meters and then across the bottom 
we have our next line over, which is the 8-6 line. So this 8-6 line, which goes up here, unfortunately there's this box and it with this map, the lines of the UTM, you can't see them very well just because of the coloring, but it essentially goes right down here. And these lines run all the way across and in between each square is 1,000 meters. So going between this 4, 8, 5, 1,000, 1,000, or between this 4, 8, 5 square and this 4, 8, 7 square right here, that is 1,000 meters, which is essentially, not even essentially, it is one kilometer. Next up, this um, square here is represented by the blue lines, already covered that. And what we're going to do is we're going to communicate using the 1,000 meter square to the closest 100 meters. So we don't have to get closer than 100 meters um, because uh, that would just be too exact. And so we just kind of use it to estimate what's going on here so I'll try and find a spot on the map that's like got a nice clear line going on it right here so we've got our four eight three eight eight and four eight three eight nine square and in between these is going to be ten numbers so that would be it turns into four eight eight you can see the starting of this and we're going to get a little bit into how that's broken down. And basically, this 486000, unfortunately, I colored over it, which is too bad. And I don't know how to find my eraser. But that's 486000 East. And in that, so we can actually use this one over here. We've got 492000 across. And what we do when we communicate is we just drop that 4. That 4 actually means 400,092 meters from the center of your, uh, of your uh, main grid box, the 100,000 meters squares. And so it, this is where we can get a little bit lost in the weeds and trying to figure it out. And where I recommend you watch that video is it does a really good job of breaking these down. But basically what we want to do is we just drop that 4 because it's just too detailed. Okay, so what we use then is these numbers 92000 going across. The next one is 9190. We find our 89 and 88. And in between them is going to be 10 numbers. So 881 will be here, 882 here, 3, and all the way across with the middle being 885. So about there is 885 all the way to 890 and then we start over with one again and moving across. So on the way up we can see on the bottom right hand corner right here we have the 5473 and with that 5473 that 5-4 actually means the number of meters that you are north of the equator. So at this point, you are 5,473,000 meters north of the equator. And again, if, if you join us in class, we're going to break that down a little bit more, but just watch that video. And the gentleman there does a great job of describing how this whole thing works. For the purposes of this lesson, all you want to know is you can drop that 5-4 and then you get the 73000. So when we have this box over here, we have the two lines that represent our northing. One is 73000, the next one is 74, and we can break that down with the 731, 732, 733, with 735 being in the middle, and then 739 being somewhere up here. Okay, so when we communicate our position on a map, we're going to start with the easting and then give the northing. So with the easting, the, the best way for I, that I know to remember this is we talk about in the door and up the stairs when we're using UTMs. So we go 
in the door going across and up the stairs. Okay, so we're going to start with our position inside. Let's just choose this box right here and say we were right here. And what that would give us is we're going to call that 8, 7, let's say it's 2. It might be just between 2 and 1, but we'll go 8, 7, 2. And then we go up the stairs. And the very bottom box here on this one is the 7, 2, because we can see that 7, 3 up above us. So we're going to go 8, 7, 2. And then it's 7, 3, and it's about 7. So it'll be about 7, 3, 7, or 8. And again, you're estimating you're within 100 meters. It's, uh, that's the best that you can probably do unless you want to take out your ruler and start measuring. And you really need to get within those very close of within meters. And you can actually start calculating that out. It's not super handy in backcountry skiing because once you're within 100 meters of something, you're usually within range of the, you're, you're good enough. And so we're just going to work with that 100 meters. So we have this blue arrow and basically that's just showing you that, that box in that corner. So that box in that corner there is we are at 870730. So 870 by, so I uh, crafted this a little bit awkwardly because I've already gone there. But this blue arrow, the, the number officially is that 487, right? And it's 5473000. But we're dropping that 4 in the 54 and just going with that 10,000 meter number. And then it becomes 870. 730. So let's have a look at the yellow arrow here. And I will um, let you try to figure out where that is and what the uh, UTM coordinates are. And I'm just going to draw in the lines because they're a little bit tricky to, uh, to see here. Um, this is the line going up. There we go, and we're going to go across. So there's our box. And if you look on your map at home, you can just see it's on that, uh, that ski touring line that's drawn there. And uh, it's a lot easier when you're working with your map at home to see those boxes than it is on this uh, PowerPoint, which is why I encourage you to get the map. Uh, but you've got this box here. And I've put this arrow essentially right in the middle for everybody's ease of use. And that arrow is actually at 895745. So we're halfway between 89 and 90, and halfway between 74 and 75, putting it here. And what's kind of neat too is often you can't quite see it but in this top left corner here if you look on your map at home you'll actually see the number seven five and that just allows you a little bit easier to break down where these uh coordinates and what the lines actually mean on the map all right so at home um you can write down and work on what is the utm of each of these stars. So we've got this yellow star here. I'll let you take that in. You could um, mark that on the map, try to figure out the coordinates. I've got a red star over here. And this is just to play around, solidify that learning. And then we've got our sort of orangey star going on up in here. And each one of those will have a unique position we just covered. So you can just work on that. And that is essentially how you use these, uh, use these coordinates, these UTMs, um, to communicate your position on a map. And once we get into the field, we can start working on picking a UTM spot, figuring out where we are, and then using triangulation to actually calculate where we are in the field to find an exact location. And uh, 
yeah, I recommend using this uh, when you start playing around with digital tools as well. A lot of people just use digital right now. It's really not enough. You really should know how to use these traditional tools. Digital tools sometimes fail and uh, satellites go down. There's tricky stuff. They're hard to work with sometimes in the weather, et cetera, et cetera. You really want to know uh, how to use these traditional skills uh, to communicate your position, to find yourself, and you'll be able to use them in digital tools better as well when you start to understand those positions. So where we go with next in this course is we start to break down and get into the latitude and longitude systems um, of communication, and then we're going to get into trip planning, and uh, f and then we're going to take it out in the field. So if you want to join us, head on over to the website, sign up. It's going to be about four hours in class and then uh, three, four hours field time in the afternoon. We're going to pack a lot in and we're just it's a great time in the fall to uh, practice these skills, get them honed. We don't need the snow right now. Go into the winter, set up for your winter, knowing how to uh, knowing how to use these traditional skills to communicate your position and uh, find better snow, make better route plans, and ultimately have a safer winter because that's our goal out there is to find better snow, have better days, and be safer, have more fun. All right, thanks, folks. We look forward to seeing you in this course here.